Chapter Eighteen. The doll's house was a success. Mrs. Scoville ecstasized over it in terms so immeasurable, so unqualifiable, that Jacob Wells, standing near, bent a glittering glaze upon her plump white throat and unconsciously clutched and closed his hand on an invisible windpipe dave harney proclaimed its excellence effusively though he questioned the soundness of nora's philosophy and swore by his puritan gods that torvald was the longest-eared jack in two hemispheres even miss mortimer antagonistic as she was to the whole school conceded that the players had redeemed it while matt mccarthy announced that he didn't blame nora darlin the least bit though he told the gold commissioner privately that a song or so and a skirt dance wouldn't have hurt the performance. "'Of course the Nora girl was right,' he insisted to Harney, both of whom were walking on the heels of Frona and St. Vincent. "'I'd be seein'. "'Rubber!' "'Rubber your grandmother!' Matt wrathfully exclaimed. "'As I was sayin', Harney continued imperturbably, rubber boots is goin' to go sky high about the time of wash-up three ounces the pair and you can put your chips on that for a high card you can gather em in now for an ounce a pair and clear two on the deal a cinch mat a dead open and shut the devil take you and your cinches it's nora darlin i have in me mind the while they bade good-bye to Frona and St. Vincent, and went off disputing under the stars in the direction of the opera house. Gregory St. Vincent heaved an audible sigh. "'At last!' "'At last what?' Frona asked, incuriously. "'At last the first opportunity for me to tell you how well you did. You carried off the final scene wonderfully, so well that it seemed you were really passing out of my life forever.' what a misfortune it was terrible no but yes i took the whole condition upon myself you were not nora you were frona nor i torvald but gregory when you made your exit capped and jacketed and travelling bag in hand it seemed i could not possibly stay and finish my lines and when the door slammed and you were gone the only thing that saved me was the curtain it brought me to myself or else i would have rushed after you in the face of the audience it is strange how a simulated part may react upon one frona speculated or rather st vincent suggested frona made no answer and they walked on without speech she was still under the spell of the evening and the exaltation which had come to her as nora had not yet departed besides she read between the lines of st vincent's conversation and was oppressed by the timidity which comes over woman when she faces man on the verge of the greater intimacy it was a clear cold night not over cold not more than forty below and the land was bathed in a soft diffused flood of light which found its source not in the stars nor yet in the moon which was somewhere over the other side of the world from the southeast to the northwest a pale greenish glow fringed the rim of the heavens and it was from this the dim radiance was exhaled suddenly like the ray of a searchlight a band of white light ploughed overhead night turned to ghostly day on the instant then blacker night descended but to the southeast a noiseless commotion was apparent the glowing greenish gauze was in a ferment bubbling uprearing downfalling and tentatively thrusting huge bodiless hands into the upper ether once more a cyclopean rocket twisted its fiery way across the sky from horizon to zenith and on and on in tremendous flight to horizon again but the span could not hold and in its wake the black night brooded and yet again broader stronger deeper lavishly spilling streamers to right and left it flaunted the midmost zenith with its gorgeous flare and passed on down to the further edge of the world heaven was bridged at last and the bridge endured at this flaming triumph the silence of earth was broken and ten thousand wolf-dogs in long-drawn unison howls sobbed their dismay and grief frona shivered and st vincent passed his arm about her waist 
the woman in her was aware of the touch of man and of a slight tingling thrill of vague delight but she made no resistance and as the wolf-dogs mourned at her feet and the aurora wantoned overhead she felt herself drawn against him closely need i tell my story he whispered she drooped her head in tired content on his shoulder and together they watched the burning vault wherein the stars dimmed and vanished ebbing flowing pulsing to some tremendous rhythm the prism colors hurled themselves in luminous deluge across the firmament then the canopy of heaven became a mighty loom wherein imperial purple and deep sea green blended wove and interwove with blazing woof and flashing warp till the most delicate of tools fluorescent and bewildering was daintily and airily shaken in the face of the astonished night without warning the span was sundered by an arrogant arm of black the arch dissolved in blushing confusion chasms of blackness yawned grew and rushed together broken masses of strayed colour and fading fire stole timidly towards the skyline then the dome of night towered imponderable immense and the stars came back one by one and the wolf-dogs mourned anew i can offer you so little dear the man said with a slightly perceptible bitterness the precarious fortunes of a gipsy wanderer and the woman placing his hand and pressing it against her heart said as a great woman had said before her a tent and a crust of bread with you richard End of chapter 18 Read by Don W. Jenkins Rancho San Diego, California Shaggybark.blogspot.com